This is our fourth video on the exponent laws. This is the quotient rule, which will actually take me two videos to get through. To start with, x cubed divided by x squared can be written out as x times x times x for the x cubed, x times x for the x squared on the bottom. And you know if you have a factor in the top that's identical to a factor in the bottom, you can cancel them out. So I canceled those x's, I can cancel these x's. And all I'm left with is just x. Now that's actually x to the first if you want to think about it that way. Now take a look at this. We are dividing expressions with the common base. And what did we do with the exponents? We just subtracted 3 minus 2. And the reason it's subtract is that as you cancel, you are subtracting away common x's. This leads to the quotient rule. It says a to the x divided by a to the y is a to the x minus y. Notice, again, it is the same base, just like the other rules. So we keep the base and we subtract the exponents. And right now we are thinking about subtracting the exponents from the top down. We'll adjust that in a little bit. So keep the base, subtract the exponents. Examples. x to the 10th, y to the 7th on the top. Let's deal just with our x's right now. Keep the base and subtract those exponents. x to the 10 minus 2 y to the 7 minus 5. Simple subtraction gives you x to the 8, y to the 2nd. Do you need to write this step out? That's up to you. Can you do 10 minus 2 and get 8 in your head? Well then go straight to this step. If you have a coefficient, you need to think about the fact that 8 and 6 are not exponents. They are plain old numbers. This is as if you were just doing 8 over 6. You must reduce the fraction 8 over 6 to the fraction four-thirds. Then deal with the exponents. For our x's, keep the base of x, subtract 6 minus 2. Keep the base of y and subtract 4 minus 1. Like we said earlier, when there is no exponent showing, it's understood to be a 1. Do your simple subtraction there, and you have four-thirds times x to the fourth, y to the third. Notice in the first couple of examples, we always had the exponent in the top being bigger than the exponent in the bottom. Sometimes it's the other way around. The exponent in the bottom is bigger. Now there's two ways to think about this, and I'll show you both ways. x squared over x cubed really means x times x. The bottom is x times x times x. Like we did a second ago, cancel out x for x, cancel out x for x, which leaves a 1 in the top here. So I end up with doing this canceling idea, 1 over x. But the other way to think about this is with the exponent law. The exponent law says keep the base and subtract from the top down. 2 minus 3 actually gives me the negative exponent, negative 1. I don't want to think about the negative exponent just yet. I want us to deal with problems in this fashion. Don't think about the negative yet. I'd rather have you think right now, where are there more? Then subtract the smaller exponent from the larger exponent and put the answer where there were more of that letter. Sounds complicated, but when you see it in action, you'll understand. So let's look at an example. Take a look at this. Just deal with your x's. Where are there more x's? There's more x's in the top. So that when we subtract 2 from 6, our x answer will go in the top. Where are there more y's? There are more y's to begin with in the bottom. So that when we subtract the y's, our y answer will go in the bottom. So that the 6 minus 2 gives me a 4, and that answer does go in the top because there were more x's in the top. But the y's, when I subtract 5 from 7, it goes in the bottom because that's where there were more. The reason it stays that way has to do with if we wrote it out the long way, here's all my x's and y's, cancel out. I have an x in the top, x in the bottom, x in the top, x in the bottom. I'm done canceling x's. Look at your y's. y in the top, y in the bottom, y in the top, y in the bottom, etc etc. until I have wiped out all of the y's in the top. And what do I have left? I have x's left in the top because there were more in the top to begin with. I have y's left in the bottom because there were more y's to begin with. So that we don't want to think negative exponent, we just want to think where are there more. Now, with a coefficient, we need to think about just reducing the fraction. 8 over 16 just reduces to plain old 1 half. Now deal just with the x's. x to the 10th, x to the 7th, where are there more? 
there's more x's in the top, so that my x answer will stay in the top of the fraction. Now I extended that line just to make it easier for the fraction. Go to the next step, 10 minus 7 gives me 3. Look at your y's. Where are there more y's? y to the 8th means there's more y's in the bottom, so that my y answer will be in the bottom, and I need to subtract 5 from 8. I'm not subtracting top down, I'm subtracting the smaller from the larger. 5 from 8 gives me a y to the 3rd in the bottom. z is z to the 1st. Where are there more z's? There are more z's in the bottom. So that I'm going to put my z answer in the bottom and subtract 1 from 2. And that gives me a z in the bottom. Now I want to clean this up a little bit. I don't need 1x cubed. It's just x cubed. And I can put all of this together as 2y cubed z. So we didn't start with any negative exponents. We didn't get a negative exponent for an answer. We are just thinking about putting our variable and our exponent in the place where there were more of that letter to begin with. There were more x's in the top, that's why x stayed in the top. There were more y's in the bottom, that's why y stayed in the bottom. There were more z's in the bottom, that's why z stayed in the bottom. We'll deal with negative exponents in the next video.